I think the green texting is easier to read, so I'll write us up in that style. The way a boo girl's name is JJ was overweight, but more to the point had emotional problems, mental problems. I knew her throughout school as an outcast even to our outcast group of anime fans and the like. She would always wear pigtails. And when she sat or leant back you could see the fat folds on the back of her neck and when she had lice one time you could see them trapped and dead in the said fat fold crease. In college our group somehow became closer with her due to being in the same class and liking a few animes together. It was in college just as the first year was ending that I started dating T my boyfriend. Instantly on the Facebook status update, Jay commented something strange, I believe it said Barker, and that was all. Ignored it but then she started getting nasty. At college whenever I mentioned him, which wasn't often I wasn't a show off she would cut me off. She flat out told me once after I got back on the phone saying bye, love you tool to him that I was a bitch. So we started hanging out with her less and less as a group because of how she was treating me, but being nice to T. We found out on her LJ that she literally had an obsession with him because he was Japanese. He's Chinese, damn it. And that she said I didn't deserve him. I confronted her about several LJ journals that were about me and T. And telling her strange followers what a bitch I was that bullied her through school and had blackmailed Tinto being in a relationship with me. She merely shrugged, couldn't even look me in the eye. I left her alone but in the same lesson Elle had confronted her about it. She later walked past me and poured paint all over my head. I had a blue scalp for a week. It happened to be a day I was wearing brand 2 dress equals ruined. Elle of course went nuts at the time and she got sent to the principal's office. But nothing was ever done as she claimed it to be an accident though it clearly wasn't she just stood behind me expressionless saying oops sarcastically. From here things only progressed one friend in our group who we didn't particularly like anyway. A male named B liked her for some reason. Probably because he can't ever get ass and was after hers. We were going to Japan Fest a good hours drive away. With T driving his dad's minivan to take us all there. B turned up with JC had a BJ. I didn't even. Ha ha ha. It is of course awkward and humble, and we ignore them for the drive there mostly. T almost refuses to take her but is polite, he's rather shy and withdrawn. We drive and get there and there's a stall selling yukatas and other traditional Japanese clothing. T begs me to try one on, so I go into the makeshift changing room and put on an outfit. When I come back out, talking with T and joking around with geisha hairpins and things out of nowhere, J pushes me over, into the mud Japan fest was set in a muddy field in the middle of nowhere. I get up as quickly as I can as T defends me and asks what the hell, but the stall owner shouts at me and J for starting a fight and makes us pay for the mud-stained yukata I'm glad I did. Because it's beautiful but still, what a bitch right? I take it off, fold it in the bag after paying for it and carry it around, taking J to the side and we both ask her what the hell again. She just says nothing to us. T point blank says she can fuck off and he's not driving her back. At this point B defends her a little and so he tells him the same and leaves I go after him ignoring B's angry shouting at how we're unfair. She pushed me in the mud. We have a nice time the rest of the time, and when it comes to leaving fine BJ by our car, just waiting, she begins telling me she's sorry and she didn't mean to. I snap, ask her what the hell she did mean to do, and she suddenly goes really red in the face glaring at me so angrily you think I'd murdered her whole family and says, meant to fucking kill you, like I should. We shove them away from the car and get out of there quickly who knows how they got home. Things like this kept happening through the months before the big violent scene happened. A few of the worst incidents finding my tires slashed in the student car park. Sure it was a. Found a journal of fanfiction that heavily described decapitating me and grinding my body parts up to put down the drains. Found a pair of scissors in my locker with a red ribbon tied round them. Just plain weird. The final scene comes up when we are invited to a party for the anime society. T is like life partners with the leader of the society, and we got there early to help set it up. LT's best friend life partner Al actually says to us both that J and B are coming to this event, just a heads up, and gets on with decorating the hall they rented out. We ponder about going home, but don't. E night goes better than expected. We see them but we ignore each other. Then the after party at L's house. T left me quite a bit to dance on tables and generally be gay with L. I am joking they're just best friends. But you know what guy friends are like. Especially when drunk. I was sat outside on the porch drinking with my girlfriends when somebody comes out and says Jay is looking for me. Sigh. Don't go in. 10 minutes or so later Jay comes out, hands behind back, and asks me to stand up and face her when I don't. She says to talk things out. So I get up. 
Put my drink round and turn around to see what she has to say. We do actually talk for a while. I try to understand why she hates me so much. She states things like you're the pretty lolita girl I want to be. You have the Asian boyfriend, the cute dresses and the perfect figure. Yeah right. I own two brand thanks to her ruining one, and in my opinion do not have the best figure. One friend goes inside being called and then something happens inside. Somebody falling off a table or something funny. So both my friends go inside. Leaving just me and Jay I felt a little nervous now. It's a little closer, arms still behind back, forcing me onto the step of the porch. Beneath her, she tells me how she knew T before me and wanted to be with him. I tell her to get over it, saying it in a harsh tone. She just tilts her head and smirks, saying something in Japanese. What? I said you should just die, roll my eyes, walk past her. She grabs my wrist and cuts it, thinking she had slit my veins but she actually hadn't. Luckily, here's the pick of the damage to that area. Note the bruises of her grip too. I tried to scream but I couldn't for some reason. I was too shocked. Began crying and tried to fuck my arm away from her but she was holding it also holding me from falling back off the porch to get away from her. It was now she suddenly advanced further pulling me toward her and her huge ass knife. It was like a big butcher's knife from Elle's kitchen. She slit my throat. My throat she did it. Looked me in the eye smiling. And then let me go. I fell off the porch. Only two steps collapsed and held my neck. Luckily she hadn't gone through anything important but on my neck she did skim something that bled out. I couldn't speak now couldn't make a sound. Nothing but choking. She left. Went back into the party like nothing happened. And later I found she'd told a person who asked about me that I went home. I laid there for a while thinking I would die. There and then enrolled onto my front only making the bleeding worse. I knew I had to get help somehow. But couldn't get up. I was losing blood rapidly though she hadn't severed arteries. It was when she said to T that I went home that he came running out. I feel sorry for him for finding me. He actually came out a good 10 minutes after it happened, and I was just laying in the dirt starting to fall asleep. I was so sure I was going to die. I felt like I was dying. He held me in his arms and screamed for help, and the music stopped people came out to help me. Holy shit F5 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 F5. Forgot my pick. Sorry. More to post 2. I remember just how distraught he was. Everyone thought I was going to die, or was almost dead there and then I just remember being on my own, and feeling that way on my own. It was the worst feeling. My body was in shock so I couldn't feel the pain. It was just laying there hoping somebody would find me that was awful. I was rushed into hospital, taken into surgery for my neck but it was luckily not as bad as they first thought. The picture is from 3 weeks after the incident where it had healed considerably. Parents and police were called, the whole shebang. Statements given from about 6 people, myself and T included. J included too. She got tried for attempt at murder on a certain degree, but the trials are still going on right now. She hasn't been charged yet, she is however in jail without bail. It's affected me so terribly, I have real abandonment issues now. Panic attacks, anxiety disorder, in therapy to recover. Still recovering from my wounds though this happened months ago obviously. My wrist is still healing. Constantly under medical tape that has to be redressed weekly. But it should be coming off in a week. Just a horrible ordeal. She was really psychopathic. I actually forgot to mention that before this she broke me and tea up for a week. Spreading this rumor. Emailing me from a made up email pretending to be a girl new at college saying that they had a one night stand together. And I believed it until I asked the said girl. And realized it was Jamie and TR together and strong. He's actually moved in with me to help me recover. As I sleep better with him over. What the actual fuck is wrong with people? Like seriously, like I would have passed this off as some gay ass fake green text story that like, you know, it's like, oh, and then everything happened and then everyone got up and clapped. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you know, all that type of shit. It's like, fuck off. You know what I mean? But, uh, no, with the pictures and all that, that's fucking mad. Like, honestly, just, you never underestimate me crazy. Don't underestimate me crazy. Like, you know, um, I, I sometimes think that, like, you know, feminism is just the female version of autism. But this is far worse. I don't know what the fuck this is. You know what I mean? Like, genuinely, oof, God. But, no, like, um, this is the first screen text I've done in a wee while now, so it is. Uh, I want to get back into doing more of them, you know what I mean? I like doing my stories and all that, and I love my 40k stuff, but, like, you know, I want to get back into, like, you know, genuine shitposting to a certain extent, you know what I mean? It's being serious and all all the time. Sometimes you just need to listen up and just be like, ah, fuck, yeah, I can do that. You know what I mean? Have a bit of fun and, you know, 
fuck about with shit, you know what I mean? But look, uh, let us know what you think down below, and uh, don't mem- well, remember to subscribe and all that jazz, and like, you know, if you haven't clicked that notification bell, because like, you know, you wouldn't want to miss any of this now, would you? Alright, I'll see you later. If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio. You might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me, and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?